Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim July 20th 2020 Sohba highlights He began by asking me he said so do you have any questions or follow-ups from what we were discussing regarding constriction and expansion in wayfaring And I said Sheikh let me reiterate what I think I understood from what you were saying Then I explained I said so you told me in constriction to remain silent and in wudu and to sleep and in expansion to work hard in ibadah and the sheikh responds yes because you either draw nur from your horizons or it draws nur from you you either give or you take nur from your horizons now, in constriction, you are to return to the heart and don't move your limbs. In expansion, move and activate all of your limbs and journey out to your branches. Perform the suprogatory devotions, the nawafil of the tongue, of the ears, of the eyes, of the feet, and of the hands. And in qabd, in constriction, cling to the arshiya, to the center point of the divine names, and remain silent. Take advantage of the cycle of constriction and expansion. There is an internal struggle there. Why is that? Sometimes the soul sees itself as an asl as the root and sometimes it, it sees itself as the branch sometimes it's, it thinks it's, it's giving instruction sometimes it thinks it's receiving it and so the soul exhausts the one who's carrying it and if you encounter the sheikh in a state of constriction he swallows you if you encounter him in a state of expansion you draw from him then I ask the sheikh why did you say that the soul undergoes five divine names in constriction and five in expansion? The Sheikh responds, In their descent, the names are five, but in the heart where they are commanded, there are fifty, as per the five prayers performed that count as fifty. Turn to the hadith of suprogatory devotions, Hadith al-Wali. The touch, the feet, the hearing, the eyes, the tongue. The touch, lamps of your hands, eyes, tongue, hearing, and feet. Those are five. These correspond to these five prayers. Now, these five, they prostrate to God. They fall in prostration. And when they are in prostration before their Lord, they are in a state of union. They are in jama. If they master that prostration, those five bring back or take 50 prayers. And this is the prostration of reverential fear. It's the prostration of the one whose limbs have become a heart. When you stand in prayer, as we always say, you place the garden to the right, the fire to the left, and yourself on the razor sharp, Sirat al-Mustaqim, the straight path. Your eyes look at the Najm, at the star of guidance in the locus of prostration where your forehead meets the ground. And if your eyes swerve from that, then you're seeing in prayer, if you look to the right or to the left, that's the share of Iblis in your eyes, or it's his share of your eyes in the prayer. The same goes for the movement of the hands. If your hands move in a manner that's not in accord with the prayer, that's the share of Iblis. And your hearing may swerve and be forgetful of what's being recited. Or the same thing in the Duha. This movement, when it's perfected, is the descent of the five names. And sometimes you have just, you take one name from the prayer but you've missed out on four, you pass through five, but you take one. So 
In perfecting the prostration of the heart within the entirety of your limbs, your ear has to be focused on what the imam is reciting. And your hands, the movement, the butch, the sense of feeling, have to be in accord with the prayer. Now your entire soul with these five limbs are undergoing cycles of expansion and constriction. And during this state of constriction, names of majesty and constriction are disclosing themselves upon you and upon them, upon those five limbs that we just mentioned. And in states of expansion, the names of beauty disclose themselves upon you. And the sweetness is found in recitation. And whatever verses you choose to recite after the Fatiha in the first and second cycle of the prayer, what's, if it's Surah Al-Kawthar or Al-Waqi'ah, whatever it may be, those verses that you recite are none other than the five disclosures of the names, depending on whether you're in constriction or expansion. You recite nothing other than those five names that are disclosing themselves upon you. Now you've finished your prayer and you say salam in a state of fear. And then the prayer is lifted. Al-amalu salihu yarfa'u. God lifts righteous deeds. Why? By God, by His names. How many names? Five names. Now if you work on beauty in the disclosures and you perfect and master the eyes but not the ear. You're able to focus on the star from the beginning to the end of the prayer. Then your eyes have taken one of the names, but not the ears. Outwardly, all of your movement is sound. All of your limbs are moving in accordance with the prayer. But inwardly, only your eyes have taken the one name. And the other limbs are not in prayer. And so your prayer is raised by a single name, and there is no union, there is no return back to the root, back to the asl. And so when you finish your prayer, you compensate for that shortcoming by saying Astaghfirullah three times. You do Astaghfirullah after the prayer for not seeing the blessing within the punishment, for not seeing Jamal within Jalal. And in order to perfect your prayer, in order to perfect the ways in which you engage with the divine names in your state of expansion and constriction. You have to work on isqat, which means collapsing or applying the heart onto the limbs. Isqatul qalbi ala sama, collapsing the heart upon the ears. If you do the isqat of the heart upon the ears, then you hear the glorification of things. You will not understand that glorification, but you will hear it, because everything glorifies in God's praise. You sabbihu bihamdi, with a name, and a pronunciation or a vocable an utterance that you've never heard. Now the waves arrive, the isha arrives, and your hearing becomes His, your seeing is His. Now you're doing the isqat the collapsing of the blessed tree, bringing it down in application. This isn't textual analysis. We're talking about when you do isqat of the heart on the tongue, you're speaking from the lamp and the glass container, al misbah wa zujaja and you are articulating the speech of the lamp and the glass container in the mishkat, in the niche. And now your speech is pre-eternal. And you speak from the presence. And your words are yours. And you can have dominance in them. And you own them. Because you speak from the presence. And you take from the one, from your Lord, and you bring that speech out onto the realm of multiplicity. This is isqatun min kalami Allahi ala lisan. Collapsing the divine speech upon the tongue. And so you do that on the ear, on the eyes, and on the tongue, the upper limbs. And then you begin to move down. You work on the feet, as per the sequential ordering of the bodily limbs in the hadith of the wali. Now you're working on rusukh, sure-footedness. You're working on turning your foot into a moving planet. 
where does this planet move? Where does it rotate? Within its own niche. It walks with God's foot. Its motion, its movement is rectitude of the alif. The alif being a trace of the dot that's above it. And so the foot then becomes a hidden treasure, a movement of pre-eternity. It becomes sunnatun fi'liyah, a sunnah of action that serves as a model to be followed. This is qadamul haq, the foot of the real. And where will it go? Wherever God loves. If the foot goes where God doesn't love, it will extinguish the divine wrath where it steps. And so you've worked on your hearing already. You've worked on your seeing. You've worked on your speech. Now with that, you're walking, and imagine you're walking to a place of disobedience. If you do that, you'll hear your foot saying, قط, as per the hadith, قط means stop, go no further, do not step any further. That is the fire, that is Jahannam. And now your foot, you can hear it, and it's not like other feet. It's a foot that says stop, and it prostrates in submission to the All-Merciful until you go back to the All-Merciful. You can't collapse or do this isqat on the entirety of the cosmos, on the entirety of creation. There's no limit to the horizons around you. You can't delimit them. But you do isqat on your own self, on your that. And then you go out into the world with that isqat. And what you touch, you touch with God's hand. مَنْ صَافَحَ مَنْ صَافَحَنِي لَا تَمَسُّهُ النَّارِ The Prophet ﷺ says, The one who shakes the hand of the one who shook my hand is not touched by the fire. Now you touch hands, and when you do so, you're working on traces of the divine names in the sensory realm of touch. This hand and this person also becomes the niche and the lamp and so on. And all of these illumined bodily parts are methal, they are representations of God's light, but they're qualified. These are branches of the original, the primordial representation of light. The Messenger ﷺ says, My companions, they are like stars, they are luminous beings, but they're not the sun. His pre-eternal sun of the Prophet ﷺ reflects within those stars. The tree, in other words, The blessed tree lights itself by itself. The secondary amthila representations, they cannot do that. So what you see are branches. They are not the nur in and of itself. Nothing goes beyond and transgresses its orbit. All of this is taken by the murid in the bay'ah. The bay'ah, the Pledge of Allegiance, is a representation of the tree of the light of the heavens and the earth. The bay'ah contains everything, but the child of Adam refuses to understand this. You take the inmost secret of the bay'ah. Where do you take it from? You take it from the locus of God's gaze, the heart of the wali. Therein, in that locus of God's gaze, is God's light, his qualities, his names, and the secret of the divine essence. It's all contained in that single fruit that you take. The two represent each other. The fruit represents God's gaze and vice versa. The fruit is the entire tree, in other words. The fruit represents the tree. The tree represents the fruit. When you take bay'ah, you've taken the entirety of the tree for the sake of ma'rifa. And the bay'ah in and of itself is ma'rifa direct knowledge of God. Now you've taken it. So what do you do with it? Where do you take it? You just take it to stare at people and look around? No. You go into the disclosure site of the heavens and the earth. Majlas samawati wal ard. The bay'ah that you took in your heart has to go into the disclosure site of the heavens and the earth. By which I mean your foot. That's your earth. And what's above it stands for the heavens. So now you've been given the treasure. You took it. The Sheikh says, go, move about. And he places you in Siyaha. 
He places you in a pious roaming upon the earth. He doesn't do that so that you sweat and tire your feet out. He does it in order for you to invoke, to reflect, and to ponder. Because with or without the intention of a Sufi Siyaha, you are in Siyaha whether you like it or not. The dunya, from the moment you leave your mother's womb until the moment you enter into the womb of Mother Earth, this entire life is a Siyaha. Except that at first you're doing that, but you're lost with no direction. Ten years go on, just like me. I was I did Siyaha for those ten years not knowing where I was going or why I was going, where I was going. Not knowing that how to taste the cycles that I was going through. Despite all of the signs, you forget them and you don't draw anything. But then you take the Sir of Beha. You take the secret of the Blessed Tree. And that Isqat that you took, that descent into the heart, the application, the imprint in the heart, you apply it to your entire life, to everything that you see, that you hear, that you say, that you touch, and that you walk upon. You do the isqat from the heart to those limbs, to your hands, everything you touch. All of it must be a touch and a grasping of divine presence. Isqat on the ears. Everything you hear, you hear from Allah. But you first have to arrive at this upper isqat, isqat ulwi, to realize everything glorifies God in praise, but you don't understand its praise. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد